So let's take a look at Artificial Life HD. It's this one down the bottom right hand corner. I came across this app recently and uh, I'll just turn the music down. Um, really uh, beneficial for science teachers. Now, um, I'm going to click on the top one here, which is the sandbox simulation. Um, it, it's about watching the protozoa, uh, the population evolve over time. Um, so it's a wonderful simulation app and we'll just have a little bit of a look through it and, and have a look. So what we've got here is what resembles, a, um, I guess, a petri dish. And we can zoom in and out to look at the different things that are happening uh, with the protozoa um, inside that petri dish, which is pretty cool. Um, down the bottom uh, of the page there, you can see that the current population is 200 and it's got the predators, the families, the food, average age and the oldest age. Um, now this becomes relevant um, later on when we actually change the variables within the petri dish here. So let's have a look at the settings down the side. Um, currently I'm in the, the world environment. So what I can actually do is the sun, which is in the middle there, I can increase its gravity to say uh, five and the radius right up and you can see that the sun is getting bigger and you can also see that the impact that that has um, on the world environment within that petri dish there you can see that things are happening a lot quicker and um, things are dying a lot quicker the populations obviously decrease significantly as a result of that um, so I'll just bring that back a little bit there um, so that we can see what's happening um, we can also down the bottom there of the settings take off the petri dish wall there um, so it lets um, the environment open up a little bit. We've got the food belt, the hiding spots, which are the, uh, the red things and so on. If I go back, I can actually also change the, the protozoa itself. I can change the number of chromosomes um, within it, the, the energy, the maximum, the speed, um, the populations and the mating energy penalty and so forth. And what I can then do is just touch on the screen and see what influence that has on my environment. Um, I, once again, I can uh, scroll in a little bit and actually have a look at what's happening within that um, or look at it from more of a global sense and see what's happening. Um, what else have we got there? We've also got, um, if I click back here, um, one of the significant things when <laughs> I first opened this app was actually being more of a student of science than a teacher of science. I went straight to the help here and it's got a really good um, uh, introduction to the app itself. Um, great diagrams, uh, what's going on, how to modify the different behaviors and so on. Um, um, really, really beneficial in regard to secondary science and a simulation app that actually lets you look um, at environments and analyze data and so forth. So um, how do we use this in a workflow on an iPad? Well, we can do some little things. I'm just gonna take a snapshot of this uh, environment. I might zoom in a little bit here. Um, and I might have observed some of the uh, characteristics and behaviors that I changed. And I might just take a screenshot by uh, the on off button and the home button at once. That takes a little um, screenshot. And then what I can do as a science student there, I can then jump into something like a Keynote uh, for my assignment and just bring in some of that data. So I'm just gonna quickly modify my Keynote here, uh, bring in that picture that I just uh, took how easy it is, uh, move that around. And as a student, what I might do is either through text or a table, I might um, uh, create a data table on that. So what I could do is I could bring in a, um, a 3D shape, for example, uh, make that a little bit smaller, um, up a bit, bring that down here, and then I can modify that data just by touching it once and going to edit data and actually modifying those things and it will adjust my um, my table there and it's also got my screenshot. So this could be a fantastic workflow of um, apps that allows you to really start study artificial life HD um, but with a purpose of recording our observational data in a keynote presentation there. Uh, there's some other settings as well there that we can have a look at or you might like to look at it your own um, uh, your own leisure. Uh, for example, I can also go back to my main menu and play survival mode. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to uh, modify the chromosomes and characteristics and then see how long uh, my population survives um, for. So if I select this one, I can modify the different um, uh, characteristics of what I want my protozoa rule to actually do. Um, so you might say, okay, in this case, it's going to attack uh, the nearest weak scavenger. 
press apply, press begin, and you can actually see um, those characteristics unfolding there. Um, and you can observe what's actually happening. Up the top there, you can see life, hunger, sleepiness, desire. Um, you can see that my protozoa is avoiding the nearest predator. It's got some little um, points there as well. So look, this is this is a, a wonderful app that um, I need to explore uh, a little bit more um, um, in an advanced fashion, uh, looking at how it can be. But I guess I see the benefits of this being definitely um, observing uh, simulations, uh, recording data, um, and, and making connections, I guess, with real life um, uh, cells and, and, and chromosomes and looking at behaviors and modifications and variables and so forth. So certainly worth a look. Certainly if you're a, a science teacher, take a look at it. It's 99 cents. Um, you'll be able to find um, a lot more benefits, I think, um, and connections that I will. Um, but certainly beautifully made um, beautifully made app and, and from an app developer's point of view, um, I'm not sure how they actually created this. It's pretty spectacular. Paul Hamilton here signing off.